Tonight on Life on the Rock, we have Father Sebastian White. We'll have a reflection on Holy Week and much more. Welcome to Life on the Rock. Tonight, our guest is Father Sebastian White. He is the editor-in-chief of the Magnificat. That's that missalette you've probably seen in your parish, maybe you have or your friend has. It's a great devotion to help you enter more deeply into the Mass. Yeah, they have readings for every day of the year, but especially this time as we approach Holy Week, you know, just to get us ready to actually really cultivate more of a devotional life, uh, really to the passion and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're now going to a reflection on Holy Week. As we enter Holy Week, we have liturgically the mysteries of Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection presented to us, sacramentally presented to us. And I think it's good the church gives us this time. It's good to reflect on these mysteries, to enter into them, to ponder them, to approach them with faith. I think of Holy Week. I think of the cross. I think of the resurrection. I think of what the cross means. The saints tell us that Jesus loves us. That's why he suffered and died for us. He would have died on the cross for us each individually if that was necessary. And it's hard sometimes for us to to believe in that love, to accept that love. I think it is because we're sinners, right? And we tend to believe that our identity is our sin. That's who we are. It's true to say that we're sinners, but fundamentally, I'm a child of God. And if I just identify with my sin, how can I really believe God loves me? God doesn't love sin. He hates sin. So we are children of God. We're made in his image and likeness. And that means that, that we are not our failures. We are not our faults. We are not our weaknesses. You are not your failed marriage. You are not your abortion. You are not your porn addiction. You are not your infidelities. You're not your weight problem. You're not your eating disorder. You're not your zip code. You're not your job. You're not your title or position. You're not your popularity or lack thereof. You are a child of God. We're all welcomed home by the father, like the prodigal son who squandered his inheritance, went to a distant land, offended his father, cut himself off from all tradition of his family. He comes home the father runs to welcome him, embraces him, puts the ring on his finger, the sandals on his feet, a robe, kills the fatted calf, and celebrates with joy because his son was lost and is found. His sin did not take away his sonship. And the same is true for us. We're a child of God. We're called to believe in his love for us. And during Holy Week, that is presented to us so vividly, so strongly on the cross that he died for us out of love. Father Sebastian, welcome to Life on the Rock. Thanks very much. Thanks and, for having um, me. You're the editor-in-chief with the uh, Magnificat, a popular uh, Catholic devotional. And um, I wanted to ask you just kind of in your own experience and how you got kind of selected to be the editor-in-chief and what's it been like to be working with the Magnificat. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I, I love uh, the work that I do. I love being part of Magnificat and I love seeing, it's, it's just a great joy mm -hmm. to travel somewhere and um, see Magnificat in, in a church yeah. or somebody using Magnificat. I, um, often other other people, friends and other people have told me they, they were on an airplane and they saw somebody mm -hmm. with, with Magnificat. So it's a great joy to know how um, helpful it is to people all across our, our country. Um, I've been the editor, I've been the editor-in-chief for uh, just about four years now 
and um, the the publication was actually founded in France mm -hmm. in the early 1990s, and um, s several years later, in the late 1990s, when the when the publisher wanted to begin a U.S. edition, he was introduced to a Dominican friar of our province, of the province of St. Joseph. Uh, his name was Father Peter John Cameron, mm -hmm. um, and so he became the the founding editor. Okay, and uh, and it was, so it was really under under his. Um, his guidance that uh, Magnificat grew, you know, to, to uh, become so popular, and so over 20, he he was the editor for 20 years. Wow! Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I know him just from being a a, a member of the same province, from being a, a fellow Dominican. Um, and after 20 years, when uh, he he um, it decided it was the right time for him to to, to pass on, pass it on, um, he he suggested me to the to the publisher that yeah. he recommended me and so that's when I um, met with them and be, and then was asked to to succeed him as the editor-in-chief yeah what are some of the responsibilities and what do you really try to connect with the reader well the the, the one of the the signature features of Magnificat mm -hmm. is the meditation of the day yeah. right people use it to engage in mass and to participate in the mass in, in a way so it has the readings, and then the meditation of each day um, is a carefully a carefully selected text. You mm -hmm. know, I, I choose the, all the meditations from uh, it could be a more contemporary uh, theological or spiritual writer or a saint. It could be the church fathers, uh, one of the popes, um, medieval great saints. So um, the meditations really try to cover the whole span of um, of the Catholic tradition. Yeah. And give people a way to to continue to um, to pray with and think about the um, the gospel text yeah. of that day. And the, ca yeah, yeah. the the Catholic tradition it's enormous, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean it, it's endless practically. But is there anybody in particular that you're drawn to that you look for, uh, maybe inspiration-wise? Yes, I um, one of my favorites is Archbishop. Luis Maria Martinez, um, great spiritual writer. Yeah. He was the Archbishop of Mexico City. Yeah. Um, died in the mid 1950s, so he's he's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if careful readers of Magnificat yeah. will notice, you know, some who appear regularly. Um, I, I really I really love his his writing and his books. And um, in fact, soon Magnificat we're we're, we're publishing um, a never a never trans a never before translated. Uh, Collection of his sermons on Our Lady of Guadalupe. Yeah, um, and he so, wrote a great book on the Holy yeah. Spirit too. That's right. Yeah. His book, The Sanctifier, is yeah. wonderful. Only Jesus is mm -hmm. another one. Um, so I use him a lot. I, I really like the uh, the Vietnamese Cardinal Van oh, Van Tuen. Yeah. You know, the one who was in prison for for 13 years. Um, uh, he shows up in Magnificat regularly. Yeah. Um, Mother Angelica uh, has <laughs> has been yeah. has been in the pages of Magnificat as well. Um, so, um, while there are some that appear, you know, m more more often, I, I mean, I, it, there's there's really a, a breadth of, yeah. uh, to to all to the selection. Yeah, and with the uh, Magnificat, it kind of revolves around the liturgical season. That's right. And as we move through Lent and heading into Holy Week, which is you know the biggest time of the year, Easter, the greatest feast, you know, we're we have to get ready spiritually and. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times in our busy lives, you know, we can be distracted, but how do you kind of get us ready for Holy Week? Well, I think, um, for, for example, in, in Magnificat, we, we have a, a special Holy Week issue. Mm -hmm. So if you use Magnificat, you'll actually get a, a dedicated issue mm -hmm. um, separate from the, yeah. from the other one. Um, that has extra articles and extra prayers to guide you through Holy Week. So it, it will have Stations of the Cross, um, meditations on the, the sorrows of Our Lady, and meditations on um, the seven last mm -hmm. words, for example. There's a, there's a feature in there for um, praying and, and adoring uh, an, an adoration vigil on Holy Thursday. Yeah. So. Um, I think the the key to to think about is that each each day of Holy Week has unique and special graces yeah. for us, um, particular ways that we can enter into the the, the life of Christ and, and yeah. the Passion. 
Um, there is a lot packed into that week. That's and, right. Uh, I think yeah. one of them too that can a lot of times slip people's minds is also the chrism mass. Yes, you know, a lot that's of times right. where priests renew mm -hmm. uh, their ministry and their work. And um, but can you just briefly talk a little bit about that? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, that's a, and and one thing that is um, that I have found moving, and a lot and a lot of um, priests who, for example, who read who read Magnificat have found. Um, beautiful is that my, my predecessor, Father Cameron, had had kind of composed for uh, that that day in the magazine a um, an examination of conscience mm. for priests. Ooh, okay. So there's this long um, little little uh, feature in there, that, a long set of prayers and, and ways of examining oneself that that a priest can do um, to think about his own vocation, how he's living his vocation. And um, to ask for graces to be able to, you know, in the new in the new year to to be yeah. able to um, more faithfully uh, live out his priesthood. Um, so I think that's that's one one way in particular. Um, even to just to think about the different oils that are blessed um, at the Chrism Mass yeah. and how that that touches all of us, yes. not only priests, mm -hmm. right? Every baptized baby, every person that is going to be confirmed. Um, the chrism mass reaches to them. Um, and so we can think about at, at some point in our own life, right, uh, oil uh, that was blessed at a chrism mass you know, was, was used in a sacrament yeah. for ourselves, you yeah. know. Well, we have to go to a short break, but whenever we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about Holy Week. Okay. Father Sebastian, one of the things that always kind of gets me about Holy Week is that, you know, it begins on Palm Sunday where Jesus is entered into Jerusalem and he's received with great joy and praise. But by the end of the week, he's being crucified. Mm. And there's just this, just almost like a cosmic change of, it, mm -hmm. of events occurring that, uh, that week. But Holy Week, it begins with Palm Sunday. Can you talk about Palm Sunday? Yeah. Sure. I think um, one thing I, that I choose to th pray about and meditate on it on Palm Sunday and even have, have preached about is that our our life too has mm. ups and downs yeah and and to think that Jesus's life you know he he was he was received in one moment very enthusiastically and um, then very shortly after yeah. was was suffering and was yeah. being crucified you can think you know, sometimes things in our life seem to be going very well, right? Everything seems to be working together very well. And in those moments, we thank God and mm -hmm. we praise Him. And then other times when the cross enters our life and we're suffering, we can think, Jesus is, is still with me. Yeah. He's with me in my difficult moments and He's with me in my joys. Yeah. And too, with Holy Week, we're entering into the passion mm -hmm. of our Lord. And like you said, you know, one day we can be fine, everything's going well, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, out of the blue, I mean, our world can be turned upside down. That's right. It's a suffering or That's right. a tragedy. I mean, anything, it's endless. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we feel disconnected from God, from the people around us, maybe our own mission. But that's something, even as a Christian, we're called to embrace the cross as Christ and enter into that, you know, that Paschal mystery with Him. And, uh, and I always, too, think about the, the priesthood, you know, on Holy Thursday institution, uh, the priesthood, but also of the Eucharist, that, you know, our life as a Catholic revolves around that great sacrament, mm -hmm. you know, and just the, to have that devotion, because at the core of it, it is about sacrifice. That's right. And, and it's, as you said, I, I think I th it's, it's very consoling and, uh, um, and true, you know, mm -hmm. it's true also <laughs> that... Um, there, there's there's no part of our life that is there's um, like Christ can't sanctify yeah. right that um, he he knows what we're experiencing the scripture says that he he was made like us in all things except sin yeah so um, he knows what it's like to suffer right it's not as if um, when um, when we're experiencing the cross or when we're suffering somehow God has forgotten about yeah. us or that you know, Jesus has, has, has let go of us. 
Um, so to think, you know, every, every part of my life, Jesus understands and is, is holding on to me. And um, yeah, priests share in the, in, the, in the cross of Christ in a, in a unique way. Yeah. Right? I mean, we think of it, it yeah, yes, we, we celebrate the sacraments and um, represent Christ in that way, stand in, in the person of Christ, the head, right, as I said, but um, also we're, we're called to, to share in his priestly sacrifice yeah. ourselves as well. Yeah, and I too one of the things I always think about with the the Passion is that Archbishop Fontaine wrote a beautiful book mm -hmm. on the characters of the Passion. And I always kind of reflect on Peter and about his fall, mm -hmm. you know. And the first thing that kind of comes to mind was his neglect to prayer, mm -hmm. you know, just having that recourse to prayer, and how easy it is for us to get away from prayer during those times of temptation or mm -hmm. trial, but that we do have to really kind of foster that intimate relationship with God and hold on. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Um, St. Gregory of Nyssa said, it's more important to remember God than to breathe, mm. right? Uh, it's more important to, <laughs> yeah. to, 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 to basic, basically, prayer is more, is, is important, more important than breathing. Yeah. You know? And you just think, how important is, is our breath, is breathing to us? And then, well, that's also, that's what prayer is for our spiritual life, right? So to let to abandon prayer um, is is to invite spiritual suffocation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think too, just I, I think in our kind of digital media age, it's so easy to get away from prayer, you know, because we get distracted, caught mm -hmm. up in other things. We're really at the heart, you know. You know, prayer is a great channel mm -hmm. of grace. You know, so many graces actually come through prayer, and I think mm -hmm. if we made more time, you know, you hear it a lot of times, well, I don't have time, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, and I, what I think one of the beautiful things about the church is like, you know, there's prayers of all sort, mm -hmm. kind of short to the point, you know, they can be very devotional, but it makes that available to us that we can have that foundation of prayer in our lives. And that's I think right. that's so key um, in our modern day world to have that, that and, sense of devotion. And we have time. We, we make time for the people we love, mm -hmm. right? If yeah. someone's important to you, because God, God is a person, right. Right? three persons, in yeah. fact, right? But, so it, it's not just that there's some um, uh, requirement sort of just kind of hanging over our head, right? Yeah. That has no personal quality to it. Yeah. Um, and, and just like in a relationship with your with a, a brother in your community or husbands and wives and, and their relationship with each other or with their children or a close friend, right? We, we don't find that it's a burden yeah. to speak to people and to spend time with people that we love and yeah. that we know love us. Um, and, and so to, to the degree that we really, that our, that our faith in, informs our understanding of God, that we, we recognize God as a, a person, he loves me, yeah. right? and that I can actually come to know him and speak to him, right? If we really believe that, then that's where we find the, the, the desire, yeah. right? and the kind of warmth to actually spend time and, and speak to him. Prayer is, is a kind of an act of faith, right? Yeah. Um, I think, too, we find that climax of God's love for man mm -hmm. in the passion, in his sorrows, of how he is reaching out, arms open, to embrace us that a lot of times are indifferent or cold hearted or don't care and, and all that or just in the habit of sin. But really God is calling us to that deeper relationship with them. That's right. Yes, God shows his love for us in that Christ, Christ died for us even while we were sinners, right? Yeah. He didn't send his son because we were, we were great you know, <laughs> and wanted, yeah. um, you know, just, just wanted to um, enjoy our, our company. Right? He sent his son for our salvation. Right. Um, so he sent his son out of love. Right? So when we look at the, that's another motivation for prayer. Right? I think when you see a cross, you can ponder the love of God shown in, um, in, in sending his son to, yeah. to die for us. Well, Father, I wish we had more time, but thank you for being on Life on the Rock. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Prayer is more necessary than breathing. St. Gregory of Nyssa. That yeah. got my attention, you know. Do I treat prayer as that vital in my life? 
And the Magnificat helps us enter more mm -hmm. deeply into prayer. Yeah, it's a big part of prayer. And I think whenever we drift away from the Lord, the first thing to go is prayer. It's just all too easy to just get kind of lazy or indifferent or maybe think we're wasting our time. But really, no, that time we spend with our Lord, that, that really does strengthen us. And it grounds us, too, that in humility, that, you know, we can't do everything on our own. We are a lot of times burdened with life of different things. Mm -hmm. But we have to make time for prayer with God. He wants to communicate with us. He wants to have a deeper relationship with us. And, you know, God does his part, but we also have to do ours. Now, we fumble a lot of times, and we do have to rely on that grace. And we need to pray for those graces to come in our life, that we will foster that spirit of prayer. So this is Holy Week, and mm -hmm. your interview is about largely about Holy Week. And one thing that helps me every year to think about is that these sacred mysteries of Christ's life that you yeah. said, you know, Easter is the greatest feast day in the church, the high holy day of the year, is these mysteries of our Lord's life, especially during this most dramatic mm -hmm. point, the high point of his, his life, is represented to us in the liturgy during mm -hmm. Holy Week. You yeah. know, we have Holy Thursday, yeah. the institution of the priesthood, the institution of the Eucharist, Good Friday, the day he died, and of course, Easter Sunday. So these, the liturgy makes them present to us again, yeah. you know, and we can enter into them with faith and experience the grace of this liturgical season in a new way. It has yeah. a particular grace for us. And we enter into all the mysteries of the joyful, luminous, the sorrowful, and the glorious. And I also think, too, during this time, it's a great time to really pray for the priesthood of the spiritual, uh, for their spiritual renewal of all things. And, um, and that time of just having that, I think even this, the devotion to cultivating a love for the priesthood, you know, and fostering maybe vocations, that I think this is a fruitful time of the period during Holy Week, you mm -hmm. know, because we are, again, entering into that Paschal mystery. So. Right. You know, you're talking about uh, Holy Thursday. Holy Oftentimes in, in dioceses it's mm -hmm. celebrated that Tuesday. Uh, but, yeah, the lay people are, w are welcome to join in yeah. and come mm -hmm. to attend that Mass. And it is powerful to see all your mm -hmm. priests gather together. They consecrate the oils that will be yeah. used in the sacraments. It's amazing. It's a beautiful Mass to attend. Right, yeah. right. Well, we'll send you into that vineyard with a blessing and a special blessing during this Paschal time that you may be renewed in your faith and strengthened in your participation in Holy Week. May our Heavenly Father shine His face upon you. May He give you His peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We'll see you next week on Life on the Rock. I'm just a poor wayfaring stranger Traveling this world below there's no sickness no toil or danger in that bright land to which I go I'm going there to see my father and all my Going over Jordan, I'm just going over home. I know dark clouds will gather around me. I know my. The beauteous fields arise before me, where God's redeemed their vigils keep. I'm going there to see my mother. She said she'd meet. Just go.